All right. Welcome to ENTV today. Carl Atwater, I am excited to be interviewing you today. This is going to be a fun one. Very good to be here. Okay. So for those, Carl, that do not know, they've never met Carl Atwater before. Carl was an E who gave himself an E in high school because of a fun story. Carl, where does your story begin? Like, where do we go with this? Where do we start with this? We started in 1975. I was um, a senior in high school, and my plan was to be a student bus driver in North Carolina. And I had an accident at the beginning of the year uh, because of my inexperience. And so all of a sudden, my part-time job that I was planning to have disappeared. Well, they had auditions for Godspell that year. And so I auditioned for Godspell, and that's when I discovered I could sing. I thought everyone could sing. I didn't think it was that big a deal. Uh, my family's very musical, so I just thought it was just, you know, all families were like this. So I was uh, I was in Godspell, and that was such a success that they uh, the next semester in, my, in spring, that was fall, in spring, we did a production of Oklahoma. I was cast in that, and I got to sing the big Oklahoma production number. That was my solo. And then we did a production of Celebration. And uh, so that started my career. And then I was, people told me, oh, wow, you're so good. You really should audition for the North Carolina School of the Arts. And I said, okay, I guess that's what I'm supposed to do. So I went to audition. I set up an audition for the North Carolina School of the Arts as an acting major. And, uh, but I was a procrastinator in high school, so I didn't study my monologues. And when I went to the audition, I forgot the words to the monologues. And to, two monologues, I forgot the words to both of them. And so I knew I, was, I knew I wasn't gonna get, yeah, oops is right. I knew I wasn't gonna get accepted. And so, um, I, but they required that you sing as part of the audition. And so I, sang Old Man River. So at the age of 17, at 140 pounds, my voice was Old Man River. And my voice hasn't changed in 50 years. So uh, I knew I messed up the audition. I went back out to the car to see my mom who took me. And I said, they're not going to accept me. I blew it. They're not going to accept me. She said, OK, go back into the cafeteria, get yourself something to eat, and we'll go home. I go back into the cafeteria and I'm sitting there kicking myself because I just, I knew I blew it. I had a light opportunity and I blew it. But as I'm sitting there, the lady who conducted the audition, a little four foot, 11 inch British lady, she came walking by and she said, you just auditioned for the acting, right? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, if I could arrange an audition for you to be a voice major, would you consider that? I said, absolutely. So she arranged the audition. 15 minutes later, I met the lady, auditioned, was accepted on the spot, offered a scholarship on the spot. If I don't, if I don't have a bus accident, I don't know I can sing. If I don't go back into that cafeteria, I don't get accepted to college. Because this was July after high school was over. So two points that changed my life. My life turned on a dime on those two points. And then I went to my cousin who did do her homework and did go to school, um, she uh, went to Howard University. She invited me to come visit her for homecoming. I went to Howard University to visit for homecoming and I was totally enamored with the campus. And so uh, a few months later, I went back to uh, visit her for my spring break. And at spring break, I said, hmm, I wonder if they have a voice department here. So I arranged an audition to audition as a voice major. And I went in with the worst head cold of my life. So I'm, all kinds of stuff is coming out of my face. And um, I, when I went to the audition, the gentleman said, what are you gonna sing? And I said, I'm gonna sing Caro Mio Band and the, an Italian art song. So he starts playing and I start singing. And I got to the end of the first phrase and he stopped playing. And he looked at me and he said, Mr. Atwater, hold on one second. He went down the hall, got another professor, brought him in, and he said, Mr. Atwater, I want you to do the same thing 
He played, I sang, I got to the end of the song. They both looked at me and they asked me to step outside for a second. I'm not sure if I've really blown it or if I've done well, because I'm only 19 years old. And he said, they called me back in after about four minutes and they said, Mr. Atwater, if we were willing to offer you a scholarship, a full scholarship to Howard University, would you consider transferring here? Oh, yes, I would. And so I, bus accident, going back in the cafeteria, auditioned at Howard. My life turned on a dime on each one of those. Each one of those events was about 10 months apart. So from the time I was 17, 18, and 19, boom, 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 my life changed, changed, changed. And that's how I got started in theater. I ended up getting my degree from Howard University as a theater major. So this, okay. And then what happened? Because now we're how many decades and then life and then... Right. Okay. So I graduated from Howard in um, uh, 1984. I stayed in Washington for a little bit, and then I moved to New York City. So um, I moved to New York City, and within a year, I auditioned for um, a uh, the national tour of a show called Williams and Walker which was a musical about Burt Williams and George Walker. They were the first two black men to perform on Broadway. And I got the lead role and we ended up touring for the entire year of 1987. Um, and um, so it was wonderful experience. And, but in those days we didn't have the internet and all the cell phones and stuff we have now. So every time I came back into town from being on tour, I had to kind of reestablish myself. And after a couple of years of the show not picking up again, um, I said, you know what? I need to get a job. So I got a job with the post office and I worked for the post office for 28 and a half years. Now, while I was working at the post office, I was fortunate enough to, I got to sing the national anthem at Madison Square Garden. Uh, and that was cool. But then after I, uh, towards the end of my tenure with the post office, my last five years, I transferred to Atlanta where I live now. And um, after, and I retired six and a half years ago. And when I retired from the post office, I didn't move here because of theater or film, but I said, you know, since I'm gonna be retired, I'm gonna need something to do. And so I started auditioning and it just took off. I have been in, uh, in the last six and a half years, I've done about 30 films, short films, feature films, uh, 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 TV series, music videos, voiceover work, um, national, uh, national and local commercials. So I have worked quite a bit. I'm fortunate to be a working actor and it's all I do now. I mean, uh, uh, yes, I have my postal pension, but in fact, the reason that I have a beard now I normally have my head bald and I normally have like a goatee. I've grown a beard because I'm Wednesday, I'm gonna be flying to New York to shoot a film in New York and they asked me to keep the full beard. So um, after that, I'll probably shave again and get back to my, my, my regular look. So, um, so that's how I ended up at where I am now. And in the midst of my uh, retirement and all the auditioning and things that I've done. In January of 2020, uh, the Strand Theater posted, the Strand Theater is a theater here in Marietta, Georgia. They posted that they were having auditions for their musical season that year. And at that time, 2020, I had just gotten back into the acting and stuff. And I said, well, they said it's musical. I'm calling myself a singer. So I have to at least go on audition. So at the beginning, beginning of January, I'm 61 years old. Now I know from experience that musicals, they are going to be singing and dancing and maybe some acting. But, and I'm 66 and I'm not a dancer and I'm out of shape and I'm, I'm 61, excuse me. Uh, but I said, okay, well, I'll go. Hopefully they need a good, strong singer. So I go to the audition and it's myself and about 30 people who are young enough to be my children and grandchildren. So, uh, and I'm the only person with any gray in their hair. I'm even older than the producer and the choreographer, okay? 
So I go to the audition and I was the last one to sing. And they said, okay, Carl, so what are you going to sing for us? And I said, well, uh, I'm going to sing Old Man River. And, and looking at the people who are here auditioning with me, the last time I sang this song was probably before most of them were born. And everybody chuckled. And so we did the audition and we did the dance part. And like I said, I'm not a dancer and I'm out of shape and I'm 61. So I'm huffing and puffing. And uh, But they quickly got to know my name. And by the time we got to the end of the dance part, they uh, about halfway through it, he said he was teaching us the routine. And he said, uh, the choreographer said, OK, does, uh, does anyone have any questions? And I raised my hand and he said, yeah, Carl, what's your question? And I said, can, can I just sing? And they laughed. And so we finished the dance part. And at the by the end of the dance part, they asked us to break off into groups of four. And so uh, I did the routine the best I could. And at the end of the routine, everyone gave a roaring applause because as if to say, well, thank God the old guy finished and thank God he didn't have a heart attack. Uh, and so we finished the audition and they said, thank you, everyone. We'll let you know. OK, so beginning of January 2020. So I go on about my business. All of January, I didn't hear anything. All of February, I didn't hear anything. So I figured they gave the part to the kids. No problem. End of February, I get an email that says, we want you to come to a callback audition. Please be prepared to sit, please be prepared to dance and let us know if you'll be coming. And I thought that the letting them know that I'd be coming was a slightly peculiar request, but I said, okay. So I let them know I was gonna be there. And sure enough, the last day of February, 2020, it was a Saturday, January 20, uh, February 29th. And um, I showed up at a uh, quarter to two, the audition was at two. And once again, it's me and these kids in their teens and their twenties. And uh, as I walked through the door, the kids looked up and they saw me walk in and they looked at me like, what's the old guy doing here? And I looked at them like, I got invited back. That means that I'm still in the running and I'm sure they did not invite me back just to laugh at me. So uh, we went through the audition. It was the same choreography, the same dance routine and the same results. I still cannot dance. I still 61 and I'm still out of shape but I did the best I could. And at the end of the audition, they said, um, okay, everybody, we'll let you know by March 31st. So I'm getting my stuff together and it's ready. I'm ready to leave. And they said, hey, Carl, hold up a second. We want to talk to you. I said, okay. So the kids have all left and it's me, the producer, the director, and the choreographer. So the director gives me, um, a side, uh, a piece of the script and said, hey, read this for me. And I said, okay. So I like, he said, do you need a second? I said, no, no, I do a good cold read. So I read it and it just felt like it was written for me. It just really flowed very smoothly. And so I give it back to them. So the director looks at the choreographer and they look at each other and they both nod their heads. And then the choreographer looks at me and says, okay, Carl, so you know you've been cast in the show, right? And I was a little puzzled because they just told everybody else the end of March, I haven't left the building yet. The director looks at me and says, this is an original show. We were going in a completely different direction and then you showed up. So now we have rewritten the entire script around you. You will be the centerpiece of the show. And my mouth fell off. And I thought he was kidding. He said, no, no, we're serious. So I went downstairs, I got into my truck, I made sure all my windows were up and I screamed and I got on the phone and I called my mom and I said, guess what? And sure. And now in, this is 2020. So COVID knocked out the show that year. But um, he said, when they called me and said, the show's been canceled, uh, but we want to do the show next year when this COVID thing settles down uh, and we want to do it with you. And I said, okay, great. So sure enough, uh, June of 2021, they called me up, said, are you still interested and available? I said, very much so. And now that time I was just coming off of doing Driving Miss Daisy and I was about to be in rehearsal for Ain't Miss Behaven. And as well then, and we fortunately, it worked out that I was able to do the show 
And the name of the show was Jukebox Giants Motown and More. It's music of the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And um, I, um, people tell me, they say, oh, you're the star. I said, no, I'm not the star. The kids are the stars of the show. I'm the lead, which means I'm the narrator. I tell the story, and the story, the fictitious story that I tell connects the songs. And so um, I tell this fictitious story about how I um, I go down into my basement, and I'm looking for a recipe book, and I, I find um, my journal that I haven't seen in decades. And as I'm flipping through the journal, what I read in the journal happens as a flashback on the stage. And there's even a young man who plays young Carl. He plays a younger version of me. And so I meet a girl, hang out at this club, want to be in this uh, group, get drafted into the armed forces. And I won't tell you anything else because there are a couple of surprise endings at the show. Uh, and it is a phenomenal show. We The first year we did seven shows. The second year we did seven shows. Last year, they added a show. We did eight shows. And this year we're doing 12 shows. And there's already been some talk a little bit about possibly taking the road, the show on the road on tour. Um, we've never failed to get a standing ovation. I have performed in some wonderful shows in my life. This is without a doubt one of the best shows I have ever been in. And I'm just tickle silly that now a 66 year old, by the time we do the show in August, I'll be 66, a 66 year old guy is on stage with these kids and they are singing and dancing their hearts out. And I'm telling the story and it is just a phenomenal opportunity. So I tell people it's never too late. I went in audition just hoping to get a part in the play and I end up with the lead. I'm the only one who even speaks. The kids just sing and dance. I talk and tell and, and constantly doing monologues, connecting the songs. And I just get excited every time I think about it. And every year, They've come by. It's the only show that the Strand repeats that they produce. They've done. They do other shows and other things come in, but this is the one show that they produce, and this is the longest run of any show that they've produced. Uh, these three weekends that we'll be doing in August. So um, I've been telling people about it already for months, and um, I'll be telling people about it all the way up until the last show, uh, and it's August 9th through the twenty fifth at the Strand and the um, the uh, the link for tickets is strandmarietta.org and tickets are currently on sale. Um, and in fact, I've got on my Motown t-shirt. Uh, so, um, but um, but yeah, so I, you know, I tell people don't give up and I, I have a presence on Facebook and Instagram and a lot of people tell me that they live vicariously through me because of the fact that I'm, frequently working doing plays uh you know movies and you know so i post that stuff on facebook to let people know what i'm doing and uh everyone tells me that they're very proud of me and i always try to make sure to do the best job i can because i want the people who i know to be proud of the work that i do and i only choose projects that i know i'll be proud of mostly in the beginning a couple of years ago i, I did a couple of things that was like mm -hmm. But now I, I I get to pick and choose. So, uh, but I, I obviously I love what I do, uh, and, and every day I get up and I'm looking at auditions and I'm looking at um, you know um, to submit to things. So I'm 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 always looking at film, TV, uh, you know, radio, voiceover, uh, music video, the, everything. I you know I do I do it all. I don't dance. <laughs> But uh, I move. I used to move well. Now I just move. <laughs> does your does your life make sense when you look back on it now? Perfect sense. Um, I I had wonderful training at Howard University, uh, and as a result of the training and the well and the discipline that I received at Howard, it now has come full circle because you know I took almost three decades off from doing what I love to do just to make a living. And the thing I always tell people is, especially young people, and I'm when I when I do whatever I do, whatever, whether whatever production I'm involved in, be it film or or stage, I'm often the oldest person involved, especially often the oldest talent involved. And so I always tell folks, 
find what you love to do in life and do it. The money will find you, you know, uh, and and uh, it, because I spent almost three decades of my life just working for the money. I don't regret it. I have a wonderfully comfortable home. I got a new truck and all that good stuff. But um, and I'm debt free. But, you know, for three decades, I just worked for the money. And now that I get to do what I passionately love to do, I like I say, I've come full circle. The uh, the training that I got, the the natural talents, you know, and, and there's certainly more training that I could do. I know that I, you know, take I take acting uh, still. You never stop learning. But, you know, I was blessed with a big, strong bass voice. And I'm blessed with the fact that I don't even know what stage fright is. You put me on a stage, give me a microphone and put me in front of 5,000 people and I'm right at home. No problem. There is no shyness there. Um, and so to be able to do what I do now is very exciting to me. And I know it's a tremendous motivation to a lot of people. I have a friend of mine, a, a lady who I met, I did, uh, when I was doing Ain't Misbehaving, I was in the show with her daughter. And this lady is a wonderful cook. And her goal is to open her own restaurant. And she told me as a result of seeing what I'm doing with my life, it has motivated her to start her own restaurant. She has a, a wonderful catering business now, but she's looking to open her own restaurant. And just seeing what I do has motivated her to even do more to get to reach her goal. And that really that, that, that gives me a, a wonderful amount of joy knowing that I'm having a positive influence on other people's lives. So yeah, so coming full circle, what I where I started um, in high school to where I am now, 40 plus years later, uh, is um, you know it's it's a thrill. It's a thrill. I you know every day I wake up and it's never like going to work. You know I get on a computer and I'm looking up stuff and. It's like, oh, good, you know, because I always see myself every part that I audition for. I always see myself in that role. And uh, so I, I audition for things that I think I'd be good for. But of course, I'm a typical actor. I think I'd be good for everything. So, um, yeah. So um, do you yeah, ever, do you ever sing online or is it always like, can a person sing online? Is the our mic set up to capture the essence of the voice ideally? Um, well, I don't know if that exists, but I have a, I have a YouTube channel, uh, and I have several of the films that I've done, and I have a clip of me singing Old Man River on my YouTube channel, uh, so anyone can go to look up Carl Atwater, Carl with an E, on YouTube, and you can see, uh, I've got some monologues that I've done, some uh, some singing that I've done, some some of the songs that when I performed doing uh, Ain't Misbehaving and uh, Jukebox Giants, some people have uh, cop, um, recorded some of those clips, and I've got those posted as well. Um, so uh, so yeah, the, you know there a lot of people post a lot of things online, and and so I have followed suit, and with that, it's uh, because it's easier than. People used to always say, well, can I see your movies or can I see something you've done? And so I would cut, copy and paste and I'm emailing them all this. And then I found out that I can have my own YouTube channel. So now I just I'm and I'm still loading stuff up to my YouTube channel. So it's going to be constantly evolving. So. Um, so, yeah. Amazing. I got to ask, what's your low note? You do C's, B flats. Where are you? Low B flat. No, that's a solid. And you're clean, not not um vocal fry. It's a clean B flat. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, uh, oh. I I sing sing in the um uh the Wendell P. Whalem Community Choir. We had our annual um spring concert yesterday, and um we had a few. We 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 did a couple of Negro spirituals, and uh, in I love those, those songs. Was, okay, you you would love this, and and I recorded one of the songs. The the last song that we did um, is um, uh, 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 keep keep my lamps, and and at the very end of the song, I get to go to rock bottom, 
And then so I just go, uh, and uh, so I'm not sure if that's even the right cue or the right note, but you know, so I get to just really, I call it growling. So I get to really growl and hit the, you know, and and in, in the um, in the rehearsals at times when we when we were rehearsing the songs, uh, I sit. I'm in the bass section because I'm a natural, true double bass, and uh, the so the altos sit right in front of us. And sometimes when we were rehearsing and we're doing those notes, and I hit that note, some of the altos that kind of look back at me like, "You actually hit that note," so it's it just makes me chuckle. So so yeah yeah I've got a I've got a very a naturally deep singing voice. I know my 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 voice gets kind of yeah when I get to talking and get excited, but but I'm I'm a, I'm a natural double bass. Beautiful. I grew up singing in quartets and in choirs, and I love. Uh, harmonies and acapella. Oh my gosh, I was, I was always mesmerized by real, like your like true basses that can even hit a, a low C, like a C two, right? That's a C two, oh. I think. Yeah, like I'm just even a C two is like to hear it acapella, and the reverberations coming through your chest affect everyone within forty feet of you. They feel it. It's, oh yeah, yeah, oh, it's amazing. <laughs> I'm doing it. I was able to do that at the age of like 19. And when I was uh, when I was in school at Howard, one of my professors, uh, uh, Ted Cooper, he started a group that was called Reminiscence. And I got to learn a lot of the we sang a lot of music of the 50s and a little bit of the 60s. So, I mean, old school, you know, uh, the Drifters and, um, you know, so those groups. And so uh in all of those groups, there was always a bass part. And people would just marvel that I could hit those notes because I only weighed like 140 pounds. So I'm this little toothpick and, you know, uh, and they were like, they thought I was, you know, they were looking for the, the voice in the back. And and one of, one of the shows that I did that I really enjoyed doing uh, uh, several years ago, well, in 1987, I did a production of uh, Little Shop of Horrors, and I played the voice of the plant. So I'm off stage with a microphone. Uh, what do you mean? You know, I'm doing they're doing all this. Uh, feed me, see boy, feed me all night long. That's right, boy, you can do it. So you know, uh, so I, I love that show. I love that show. I want to do that show again. Did you ever do any yeah. doo wop? Any um, male quartet doo wop stuff? Quartet quintet, uh, like doo wop, like a boys to not boys to men, but you know what I mean, like the doo wop stuff from the sixties and um, what was that famous band? Uh, the oh, nylons, the nylons, the nylons, the male no, quartet. No, okay. But uh, but yeah, that the group reminiscence that I, that I was speaking of. That was what that was the music that we did. Um, so uh, you know, we we did several of those, uh, and we did several of the groups of the day, which were from the fifties. But also, we had a guy who did, did Chuck Berry, and he used to goose step and play the guitar. And um, we had a guy who sing a real high note. So we would do uh, you know some of the the harmonies, the tight harmonies, and then when there was a high note, he would hit that. But then I also I can also sing falsetta. Uh, so which would kind of amaze people that I can, you know, to be able to sing as low as I can sing and then to be able to go, Christmas. you know, it just kind of throws people off. So, <laughs> so I got to ask you, so we have an event coming up on the 11th. It's a catapult games, closing ceremonies. Would you want to sing a song live? On there'll be a lot of people on listening. Would you like to sing a song for the closing ceremonies? Yeah, it's on the 11th. Um, I'll talk to you off camera about it, but yeah, it'd be fun. I got someone speaking at the event, and I just feel to ask you, so I'm just gonna ask you. Sure, I'd love to. I, I love to sing. I, I, I'll tell you a quick, quick, quick story. But in 1987, when I was performing, it was the first show that I did, Williams and Walker, first big show, first big part that I did. And we were touring the country and people when, you know, I would meet people and they would say, well, what, what do you do? For, you know, people always ask, well, what do you do for a living? I said, and at the time I would say, well, I'm an actor. Oh, 
well, uh, you know, I'm an actor, I'm doing a musical. Oh, can you sing for us? And I, I'm only in, I was only like 28 at the time. And I said, well, I, I kind of got offended. And I said, well, what kind of work do you do? And he said, well, uh, I'm a doctor. Okay, well, can I, can you examine me? I was trying intentionally being stupid and, and obnoxious, um, you know, to say that, well, I sing, that's what I do for a living. That's my work. You know, you're asking me to do it for free. That was my mindset when I was 29 years old. I'm 66. Man, if somebody asked me to sing, I'm like, I'd love to. I love it. I absolutely love it. You know, I love being paid to do it. And, but uh, I love, you know, being able to uh, be a blessing to people. And if my voice can do so, then I'm, I'm happy to. I'm happy to. Absolutely. All right. Well, Carl, this has been a wonderful, wonderful interview. I'm thrilled that you are here in ENTV today. And uh, we'll, we'll connect after the call. But do you have anything you want to promote? Your show's coming up. Do you have anything well, else yeah. you've done? Do you teach anything yet? Or are you? I, I got, okay. This will blow your mind. Uh, I, I do teach. I teach carpentry. <laughs> I am a master carpenter. When I went to Howard University, I did not study acting. I was a technical theater major. So I have a degree in theater, but technical theater. So building scenery and hanging lights was what I studied in school. There is a thing called a thespians conference. They have them in 42 of the 50 United States. They have these conferences and they teach high school kids um, all different aspects of theater. So I've been going around uh, this year already, I've been to Kansas City, Missouri, uh, Sylvania, Ohio, and just about three weeks ago, I was in Salem, Oregon, teaching high school kids about how to use tools, how to uh, be a theater carpenter. Because when I moved to New York, that first year before I got that first role, I worked on over 100 shows, building scenery and hanging lights before I got my first break as an actor because I knew I didn't have the mindset to be a waiter. A lot of actors do waiting jobs so they can take off whenever they want. Well, I did carpentry work. And so, so yeah, I teach carpentry. Uh, and although I don't officially train anyone in acting or, you know, theater or anything like that, I'm, I'm, all, I'm always anxious and willing to help anyone out with any information that I have. So I'm all, you know, I constantly come across people who say, well, well, how do you do this? And what, you know, I give them any information that I have. Uh, and, um, so I, I love to teach the thing that I discovered, uh, when I was working for the post office, they had a management training program and I became one of the master instructors for that management training program. I discovered in the post office that you know, the Bible talks about having a fivefold ministry gift of the fivefold ministry gifts. My gift is teaching. So I love to teach, uh, love to teach carpentry. In fact, this, this movie that I'm going to do in New York on this weekend, I'm teaching a young lady how to play chess. And one of the reasons that I got the part was because I told them I love chess and I play chess every day online with people from all around the world. So uh, teaching is just, it, it's a thrill to me. Teaching and acting are the two things I enjoy doing the most. Beautiful. Well, Carl, thank you for being here on EN TV today. I am just so excited I got to interview you. This was a riot and it was Bye. meant to be. So we will end the interview here. Reach out to Carl Atwater. He'd love to connect with you if you resonate with his voice and anything he has said, he would love to let you up. So thanks, Carl. We'll end it here and we'll keep chatting.